Yes. <laughs> I would like to apologize to Brandon Sanderson. I'm having a bad time. It's really pissing me off. <laughs> Brandon, I'm mad at you. The math is not mathing. His world building is so good. His magic system is so good. The concept for this video started at the end of October when I knew I wanted something to transition into the end of the year and I was feeling kind of burnt out of thrillers and horror books. So I decided that I was going to try to foray into fantasy. It's not something that I had read a lot of in the past. One of the biggest names in fantasy is Brandon Sanderson, so I knew I wanted to include reading one of his books. My original plan for this was to read the first book in three different popular fantasy series. So I was going to read The Final Empire, I was going to read The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin, and I was going to read The Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. I got all the books, I read the fifth season, loved it, got halfway through the second book in that trilogy because I literally could not stop myself. And then the Goodreads Choice Awards came out and I decided to read the fantasy category because I was having such a good time. So I put this video on pause. I read the fantasy category, had a really good time, learned what my taste is in fantasy a lot more. And then I lost all of the footage that I had filmed for this video. And that was really heartbreaking. So instead we're gonna pivot and I'm going to be reading all three books in the Mistborn trilogy instead. We're just gonna do one video on here and then I will get back to N.K. Jemisin and Robin Hobb later. I know for sure I still wanna read those books, but for this video, I'm gonna read this trilogy. So this is me popping in now. I have finished this book. I am starting the second book now, but I wanted to pop in and do the intro so you know what's going on because the plans have changed a little bit. So if I say anything out of pocket, that's what's going on. I know fantasy is this genre that tends to not be super inclusive and I'm just hoping that Brandon doesn't let me down. So before I spoil my thoughts on this, let me tell you what it's about. Back to past me when I was halfway through reading this. Hello friends, I am halfway through The Final Empire. I have lots of thoughts to share with you. I think when an author is as hyped as Brandon Sanderson is, it's hard to feel like he's gonna live up to that hype. And although this isn't my favorite thing I've ever read ever, I am having a really, really good time. I don't know, I was expecting it to be like, I was expecting it to be good, but it is really, really great. And I am having a really good time. The writing in here is really easy to follow. It's super accessible. Um, it feels like we're in this giant fantasy world, but I'm getting stuff fed to me at a slow enough rate that I don't feel overwhelmed at all. I'm really loving the magic system in here. I like that we're following both a younger person who's learning with us what's going on and also an older person who's really skilled in their craft. And actually quite a few older people who are skilled in their craft because it gives us both this really interesting, like nuances of what's going on and also doesn't jump over this like basic understanding of everything. The premise of this book is that we have the final empire. The Lord ruler is like the guy who runs this empire. He defeated something a thousand years ago. He's supposed to be immortal. He's supposed to be like a sliver of infinity, like a God type figure. There are these people called Ska who've been enslaved by the noble people. They're treated really awfully, obviously. And people have this view of them that they're like less than human. They're not intelligent. We do have, an uprising that is being planned throughout this book. I am so invested in what's going on. It's a big book, but I don't feel like any time is being wasted on things that I don't care about. I'm a little over halfway through it right now. I'm just having a fantastic time. We're following a 16 year old girl. This is one thing that's kind of bothering me. I really don't know why older men love to write about 16 year old girls. I would rather her be 18. I feel like if she was 18, I would have no problem with anything that was going on in here. Most of the book is male characters and some of her relationships and interactions with them. It's like a, a father daughter type relationship, but it also, I just, I don't know. I don't see a reason for her to be that young. She's acting like a full grown adult and I don't see why she can't just be an adult in this book. I don't know, it's kind of weird. <laughs> a lot of times I feel like people make teenage girls extra annoying and that's not happening in here. She's being treated like a real person who has intelligent thoughts, which is a low bar, but I'm glad to see that. I'm also really, really enjoying being in Kelsier's head. There are so many things about this that I want to talk to you about, but I think I want to finish it before I do that just because I don't want to give anything away. But so far, halfway, I'm having a really good time, a much better time than I thought I was going to have. This doesn't touch the N.K. Jemisin, like that was so good. But there are some things about this that I like better than that. Like I think the world building is much more digestible in here. I was having trouble reading the first couple chapters of the fifth season, but then I was like so invested and it wasn't overwhelming anymore. Maybe that was just because that was my first like high fantasy that I had read in a very long time. So maybe that's why this is going better, but 
the world building is feeling really digestible. I'm not feeling overwhelmed. I feel like I'm getting piece by piece by piece. And it's kind of just like figuring out what's going on. I feel like I'm still figuring out what's going on with the world. And that's like my favorite part of fantasy books is learning what the world is and trying to figure out what's going on. So I think that's maybe why I'm enjoying this so much is because Brandon Sanderson is just like giving us a little bit of world building piece by piece by piece. And I'm really enjoying that pacing. So I'm gonna go take the dog for a walk. We'll read some more of this and I'll let you know final thoughts at the end. So I just finished this and it's incredible. I, I get the hype. It lives up to the hype. I understand why everyone loves Brandon Sanderson. I am a Brandon Sanderson fan. I don't know why I was so worried about this going into it. I think it's because I had a very different experience reading A Game of Thrones. And this is something that is like very hyped. Obviously the TV show took over the world a little bit and everyone has at least heard of this. Now I knew Game of Thrones is not the most inclusive thing and I knew that there were gonna be things that were problematic about this but it still made me roll my eyes a couple times. It was just like a little bit annoying the way that it was written. Obviously they're written by different people but they're both written by older white men so I kind of assumed that they would give me the same sort of a vibe with the things that bothered me about Game of Thrones. Could the depiction of women be better? Yes. Could it be more inclusive? Yes. Did I still have a really good time? Yes. <laughs> I was so hooked, I just wanted to keep reading this nonstop. Every single time I had an opportunity to put an audiobook on, I was putting this on. It was so good. And I do highly recommend the audiobook. I was a little nervous when I picked this up because the text, it's a little, it's a little daunting. I don't know, something about the font and the way that the line spacing is kind of freaked me out a little bit. So I tried the audiobook. I wanted to see if it was going to be good. Loved whoever narrates that audiobook. I'll put their name up here, but it was so incredible, so well done. All I want to do is keep reading this series. And I feel like there's a problem that I have with a lot of trilogies where the first book is either like all the action happens and then the second book is like, okay, what are you going to do now? Or it feels like a setup for the story and I'm just learning a bunch of things and I don't really feel like I got any action or any conclusion to what was going on. But in this one, I feel like we had a full story arc happening in here. A lot went on. There were twists and turns. <laughs> there were things that I was definitely not expecting. And I feel like we got a story. And now I also feel like we're set up to have another story that is just as high stakes because I feel like it's really easy to have when it's like, okay, for a thousand years, things have been exactly the same and now everything is going to change. And then the second book is like, okay, now this minor conflict is happening or it gets so over the top that it feels a little ridiculous. This one, I feel like what we're set up to have in book two feels similar stakes, if not a little bit higher. And it feels like a similar scope. I feel like I know what I'm about to get myself into. I feel like we're gonna meet some new characters. I'm really excited to see what's going to happen in book two. I also have bookshelves that I am organizing. I think I'm gonna try to put out a video where I'm organizing my bookshelves. So if that's already out, I'll link it up there and you can watch that. I would like to apologize to Brandon Sanderson. I thought you were gonna give me problematic depictions of women and you surprised me and I look forward to reading the rest of your work. Don't know why you would be watching me and my little YouTube channel, but I'm liking what I'm seeing, Brandon. <laughs> I'm into it. <laughs> okay, on to the second book. I'll see you soon. So I have acquired the audiobook for The Well of Ascension and I am like 12% in. I'm having a bad time. I <laughs> was not expecting to come on here and tell you that I wasn't enjoying it, but I'm not enjoying it. I think it's partly a me problem. I hate reading the second book in a series right after I read the first one because there's so much of the author reintroducing you to everything. And if you've just read the previous book, you already know what's going on and it can be really annoying to get reintroduced to the entire world that you've already been in for 600 pages. That part was really annoying. I think we're pretty much past that, but like every time we're meeting one of the characters again, we're relearning everything that we just read. And I understand that books don't come out one after another, 
and that typically you're reading them a year apart and so they need to reintroduce you because you probably forgot everything. It's not a fun experience for me. This is why I put down the second book in the Poppy War trilogy. This is why I don't finish series because I, I hate this part. In the first book, I love the beginning because I love the world building, finding out what the premise is, what's going on. But with this book, I feel like we left off the first book. I have this theory of exactly what I think the central conflict is going to be in this book, set it up really, really well. I felt like I really liked Vin as a character, our main character. I really liked what she was about. I was excited to get to know her more in the second book. And I really don't like her right now. I really don't like her. I really don't like the relationship that's in here. I think they're fine as a couple. I just don't like the way it's portrayed. I gave Brandon Sanderson a lot of credit in book one for not portraying women poorly. And I take it back. <laughs> because I hate the way that she's being portrayed in this relationship. I hate the conversations about ball gowns and dresses and it just feels very old white dude trying to be a 18 year old girl, 17 year old girl. I don't like it. I'm not happy. <laughs> so I'm really sorry. I'm gonna stick it out. Obviously I'm reading the whole trilogy. I feel like all of the people that I loved and cherished in book one are either not here anymore or They've changed so dramatically that I do not recognize them. And for some of them, it's like a plot point that they've changed so dramatically. But for Vin, I feel like she's being discriminatory in this book and I don't forgive her for it. It's messed up. She also killed a dog and I don't forgive her for it. So I'm not happy with her. I don't know what else I can tell you without spoiling book one, but I am unfortunately having a way worse time. I was so excited to jump right into book two. I loved the ending of book one. I'm not having a good time now and I'm really, really bummed about it. But I am making great progress on my puzzle here. I really love these puzzles because they're little books. This one is Great American Novels. My puzzle is going better than my book. I really feel like Brandon Sanderson did so many things so well in book one. And I feel like he's just undone all of that in the first 12% of this book. I feel like our characters are super lost and they don't know what they're doing. That's fair given their situation. We've jumped forward a year. They're trying to get to this new normal after this big thing that happened at the end of book one. I'm glad that we're making them struggle through normalcy. However, I do not like the way that Vin is treating this servant. I do not like that we are not following some of the people that I really liked from book one. Some of them I understand why we're not following them. Others, I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand why we're not following them. I want to see them again. I feel like the dynamic is off. Like in book one, this whole crew, everyone was very well matched. We had some people that were humorous. We had some people who were super serious. And now it just feels like disjointed and it feels like it's not working. And like, maybe that's the point. Maybe Brandon is doing something here. You know, I should just trust him. Um, maybe I'm supposed to feel like something's wrong while I'm reading this. Obviously, the beginning of a book is not going to be as exciting as the end of a book. So you come off of the end of the book when you're like adrenaline and fighting and crazy things and plot twists. You start a new book and you're being reintroduced to everyone and we're setting up the scene for this new conflict and you're gonna have to like put in the work to get to the good stuff. It didn't feel like this much of a slog at the beginning of the first book. I did not feel this way at the beginning of the first book. I felt excited. I do not feel excited. I do not like the people that I'm supposed to like. So that's how I'm feeling. <laughs> I'm going to keep listening, but I think I'm done for tonight. I would like to know in the comments, if you've read this trilogy, if you've read other things by Brandon Sanderson, if you're a Brandon Sanderson fan, I would like to know how you feel. Cause I know he's written other things since then. I would like to know like the level of inclusivity the writing of women, does it get better? Does it stay the same? Because it's not, it's not horrible by any means, but I've been reading a lot of fantasy written in 2022, written by women. And so that is a different experience to reading this, which was written over 10 years ago. I think I need to chill a little bit, but I'd love to know like what your favorite book is in the Mistborn series. I'll check in with you when I'm halfway through. Let's do that. I'll see you when I'm halfway done. Hello. I have an update for you. I'm now 72% of the way through this. I know I said I was gonna check in with you at halfway through, but I was waiting to check in with you until I was having a good time. And it took until 72%. I really don't like this book and I'm really bummed about it. So before I tell you about that, let me tell you something that I do really enjoy because we can't have this segment be all negative. Have you guys tried this dip, everything and the elote dip from Trader Joe's? 
is the best thing I have ever eaten in my entire life and I need to share it with you because nobody talks about this dip. I feel like people talk about Trader Joe's a lot. No one's mentioned this dip to me and I would like to remedy that. I told my brother about this dip and him and his girlfriend ate like two of them immediately. Okay, now I have to tell you about this book. The first book had some of these elements in it where I was like, ooh, is that a great portrayal of women? Or would she really be thinking about that at this time? I don't know, Brandon Sanderson. But so much of the first book ended up being this political scheming and manipulating people and world building and then building up to this, you know, big thing that we were trying to do. I felt like there was enough action, there was enough intrigue that I... It, those things didn't matter to me. This is a different story. I do not believe that our main character would be hemming and hawing about whether or not she's going to wear a dress when there are three armies trying to kill her. I'm also trying to do this without any spoilers if you haven't read any of these books. It's gonna be a little difficult. I'm tiptoeing over a lot of things. The relationship that is in here. I didn't really believe it in the first book, but I was like, okay, that's fine. There's a lot going on. I don't really believe that they love each other at this point, but I'll see more of their relationship in book two. I don't believe it. I don't believe that they're in love with each other. All that they are doing is questioning whether or not they're good enough for the other person and it's really aggravating. It was very insta-lovey and now they both have a fear of commitment because they don't think they're good enough for each other and it's like very much like, oh, she's not like other girls and am I ever gonna be able to give her what she wants? And she's very much like, oh, am I a girly enough girl for him? Like, oh, I wear these pants and maybe he wants a girl who wears dresses. It's really pissing me off. I just don't believe that that's what they would be caring about when things are happening. I'm, I'm just, I'm grumpy at this book. Now I think things are starting to pick up in a way that I actually care about them again. There's more political intrigue going on. We're doing some strategy things and I think Vin is gonna go do something that I'm much more interested in. There are so many things for our characters to be stressed about. They don't need to be stressed out about whether or not they're gonna go to balls and wear pretty dresses. It just, I don't care. Totally fine to have characters that are insecure. Totally fine. But what we need is them supporting each other in order to root for the relationship. But they're not really supporting each other. So I'm not having a good time. I'll see you when I finish it. Right now, it's not looking good. I will still read the third book, even if I hate this one. I just, I really thought this was gonna go a different way. I was so excited to read the second book in this series. I thought we were gonna be doing something so much different than what we are doing in this second book. There's so many things going on that I wanna learn about. So many mysteries and so many things that we are like trying to figure out. And yet we're not focusing on any of them at all. And all we're hearing about is how insecure our two main characters are and how they're not sure if they're right for each other and how they don't feel good enough for their partner instead of just talking to each other like real adults. And there are so many other things that are so interesting that the setup is so interesting. And I just wanna learn those things. And we get those for like five minutes. And then it's back to, oh, I wonder if she'll ever wear a dress again. Like, I don't care. <laughs> I'm frustrated. So thumbs down to the book, thumbs up to this dip. It's so good, you guys. It's so good. I'm gonna finish this today. I can't go another day still reading this book. Your reward for watching me rant about this book is my puppy figured out that he has a tail this morning. Here's the clip of him figuring out he has a tail. <laughs> Did you find your tail, buddy? What is that? Hi. Alright, absolutely not. I am 83% of the way into this book and the thing that I thought we were going to be doing at the beginning of the book, like the thing that I thought the whole book was going to be, has just happened. Like we've just started on that journey. 83% of the way into the book. I'm trying not to spoil anything, but the whole thing with Straff's mistress. Are you kidding me? Like that is not how we write women. I'm mad. I'm really mad at this book. Women can have other motivations other than men. Brandon, I'm mad at you. I know you can do better than this because book one was, it was good. Book one was good. Why did you do this, Brandon? Why? All right, I'll see you when I finish it. I'm so over this. <laughs> I just finished The Well of Ascension and immediately got the last audiobook.
here's where I am so conflicted. Because Brandon Sanderson knows how to write a book, okay? The ending of all of these books is so good. Like, once this book hit 80%, I was hooked. Like, once this big battle started happening and everything was coming together, I was so hooked and our characters were acting rationally and there was no weird misogyny going on anymore. I don't understand why the whole book can't be like that. Like, I know... He knows how to write a book. <laughs> it just makes it that much more frustrating because the ending of this book was excellent. It was fantastic. I never knew it was gonna happen. The twist got me. It was so good and I had all these theories that I was thinking about through the whole book. This could have been so much more compelling if the timelines had been switched around a little bit and we could have had this well quest happening alongside the other things back in Luthadel. I feel like the timing of this was just off. If these things had been happening simultaneously, then we could have gotten a little bit more action and twist. But like all of the things that I cared about in the entire book happened in the last 20% of the book. I could have done without 80% of this book. And that's so frustrating because I know that he knows what he's doing. The first book was so much more compelling. I just absolutely hated 80% of this book. I'm still gonna read the third one because I loved the ending so much. It's frustrating as a reader, especially when I feel like so much time was spent on things that really just don't matter in the course of this book at all. I don't understand why we spent so much time focusing on those when we could have been spending much more time focusing on the things that mattered. Because everything, this last chunk of the book happened so quickly and I would have loved to have spent more more time trying to figure this out and more time slowing down in this last 20%. The pacing was way off for me, just so completely, utterly off. I hated the pacing of this book, which is really frustrating because I thought it was done so well in the first book. Well, I mean, he's got me again. I bought the third audiobook. I'm gonna go read that. I'll see you when I have something to say. I'm sure I'll have lots of thoughts and opinions. Am I rating these books? The first one, I would give a four. This one, it's a three. But the first 80% of the book was two stars and the last 20% was five. So I don't really know what you want me to do here. Okay, on to the third book, I guess. Hi friends, I am halfway through the final book in the Mistborn trilogy. I gotta tell you, I was really worried about this book when I started it because I hated the second book. Okay, I hated 80% of the second book. I loved the ending of the second book. Here are my thoughts so far. I kept wanting to come on here and tell you that I was enjoying it, but I like, then there were a couple little things that were bothering me and I was like, ah, oh, no, I'll just, I'll just wait until I know for certain which way I feel. And I really, I still don't know which way I feel, but I'm halfway through the book and I need to tell you about it. This is so much better than the second book. Like we're back now, I think, to the caliber of the first book. Maybe not quite. There are still situations in which I'm very frustrated that we have these weird romantic subplots that are just so unbelievable. Like it's very strange to me that we have people who seem to be having these infatuations with other characters without any reasoning. So a character will be like going about their day, they're spying on someone and then <gasps> she's there. This character's so in love with her, but they literally have never met her before and are giving us no reasons why they even like her. And that's the part that's bothering me. Like I don't mind a romantic subplot. I love a romantic subplot. I love a romance that I can get invested in. Even the main relationship that's happening that I'm not gonna spoil for you if you haven't read the series, it's not compelling because our characters never explain why they're attracted to each other. They never explain what it is about the other person that they love so much. It's just like, I love them so much, but am I good enough for them? And that's like the only conversation that we're having. Every single character who is in a romantic relationship or has a crush on someone, the only conversation we're having is I'm in love with them and I'm not good enough for them. It's never like I'm in love with them because they make me feel this way. Even I'm in love with them because they're the most pretty person I've ever seen. Like there's no reasoning behind it. No one is thinking through why they're attracted to this person. And characters are making really big decisions because of these relationships, because of their love for people and so that's been 
present throughout all three books. Characters are making really big decisions because of love, but I don't believe in the love. There's not enough information in here. I mean, these are big books. We could sacrifice some of the pages in here to learning the motivations behind the love. I don't think that would be very difficult to do, and so it's really frustrating that that's not there because so many things are happening because of love, but I don't believe in the love. If I believed in the love, I feel like this would be so much more compelling, but I just, there's no reasoning. And I understand that love is not something that requires reasoning. You're telling me that these characters are overthinking that they're not good enough for this person, but not overthinking or thinking at all about why they love them? The math is not mathing. I will say that the general plot of this book is much more compelling than the second book, so that I'm having a good time with. One of the things I loved about the first book was that we were in so many different places with so many different types of people, and then it all came together at the end. The similar thing is happening in this book. The second book, I felt like we were always in the same place, everyone was dealing with the same issues, we weren't following the characters that I liked, it was just not fun. Our characters, even that I liked in the first book, were acting in really weird ways that didn't feel true to the way that they were. That's fine, everyone had a little bit of an existential crisis in book two, they've had their character arcs, they're back to how they should have been all along. So now I'm much more interested because we're following characters that I like, characters that I wasn't expecting to have such a big role have kind of come into a new role that I'm really enjoying. I really like the way that some of this character development has been done. The weird romantic subplots are still throwing it off, but everything else I think is really, really well done, really thoughtful, really interesting. There are a couple of things that I'm not sure if they are plot holes or big plot twists. I have questions. I'm interested. I'm following very closely. I think that again, it's very slow burn. Like I know what the end conflict is probably going to be in this book. I'm very interested to know what's going on there, but I think there are enough battles and conflicts and political maneuvering that's happening to get us to that point that is still interesting that I'm, I'm happy reading 500 pages to get there. At this point, it's feeling like a four star to me. I don't think it's going to get above four stars, but Brandon Sanderson, I would love for you to prove me wrong. I think I'm gonna check in with you when I finish the book because I've been rambling for eight minutes already. I think you're probably tired of hearing me ramble about this trilogy and overanalyze everything that's going on, so I will check in with you when I finish it or if I can't help myself. You'll see me when you see me. <laughs> Bye. Okay, hi friends. I have finished the Mistborn trilogy and I hope you can tell by the smile on my face that I greatly enjoyed book three. I will say this will probably remain the best magic system I have ever encountered, ever. I absolutely love how this magic works in combat. That's something that I'd never seen before and maybe that's just because I'm newer to fantasy, but I really think that this magic system is unique just because of how dynamic it is and it is constantly present with everything that they are doing. It's like another sense for them. And that's not something I had ever encountered before and I just, the magic system is so freaking good in here. I love Brandon Sanderson's plots. I love his world building. I love his magic system. Didn't love his portrayal of women or of romantic relationships in general throughout this series. Uh, the first and the last book were definitely my favorites. The middle book, unfortunately, was a bit of a dud for me. This series also has a lot to say about religion. And I am a person who is incredibly interested in learning about religion, although I am not a religious person myself. So if you are a person who doesn't like religion in your books, I would maybe stay away from this one because we are talking a lot about religion and it just gets more and more of that case as the series goes on and the way that this book ends is very religion focused, if you will. But that's something that I really enjoyed. I do love conversations about history and religion and the, I guess, worth or importance of those spiritual practices in history and in the way that we live our lives. That's something that's always been interesting to me and so I really enjoyed seeing that in a fantasy world um, because characters like Seizid are very concerned with religion. And since I've been really enjoying stories about religion, like I loved, I just read The Monk and the Robot series by Becky Chambers and I really loved the way that religion is depicted in there. I love the white rat world that Tegan Fisher has created and that talks a lot about religion as well and I kind of see Brandon Sanderson's world in a similar vein to those religious systems where the religion is different to how I would consider 
the religions of our world. You know, I grew up Catholic. I don't have a great relationship with Christianity and the way that organized religion tends to be hierarchical and therefore has more capability to be corrupted. Um, the religions that I'm seeing in like Tegan Fisher's writing, Brandon Sanderson's writing, and in Becky Chambers' writing are less hierarchical and more how I would envision a religion that I would want to join would be. I would just like to say that this series was a roller coaster of emotions for me. I loved the first book so much, and then the second book was just not my cup of tea, and then the third book was so good. I want to say, before Brandon Sanderson fans get mad at me, I love his writing. I'll definitely read the rest of the Mistborn universe, I'll definitely continue to read his stuff, but I am still gonna call him out for problematic depictions of women. I'm really curious to see how his writing evolves with his newer work, see if his depictions of women and his depictions of love in general get better because I didn't love the way that that worked in this series. But I do gotta say, his plot is so good. His world building is so good. His magic system is so good. I never really knew it was going on, but I always had all of these theories. And I said earlier that I wasn't sure if there were plot holes or if it was part of the big plot twist and it was part of the big plot twist so everything got wrapped up in a way that was really satisfying to me. I wasn't left feeling like I didn't know what was going on in one portion or that there was a plot hole. Everything made sense in the end and I just really loved how he writes feeding us tiny little bits of information and my gears were constantly turning my head trying to figure out what was going on, trying to figure out what characters motivations were, trying to figure out who's playing who. It's just a really, really cool world and I'm really glad that I have read his work. I will continue to read his work. Thank you for coming along with me for this journey that was, as I said, very up and down. Hopefully you made it through to the end and didn't click off when I got mad at book two. Um, thank you for staying all the way to the end and watching what is probably a very long video. If you like this video, please give it a like. I would love to chat about what you thought about the Mistborn series. If you have read it or if you haven't read it, are you going to pick it up? Um, please let me know in the comments. I would love to have a little chat with you there. Otherwise, I will see you next week. If you want to stick around for more fantasy, I really feel like I'm going to continue reading a lot of fantasy this winter season. So if you're interested in more fantasy, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. Otherwise, I will see you next week for another video. I'm so excited for 2023 content. I'm filming this in 2022, but I think it's coming out in 2023. So you in the future, how's your first couple weeks of 2023 been? I would love to know. <laughs> see you next week. Bye.